In 2005, when this article by Dr. Helms came out in the Alternative Medicine Review, I was alerted to the confusion about gluten and celiac disease. Alternative Medicine Review was a high-quality alternative medicine journal published by the Thorne Company until just recently. Past issues and articles are readily available on the web. Page 174 has two very telling images. In the first, it talks about the taxonomy of the dietary grains. That means the relationship between the various plants, which is being adjusted with modern DNA testing. Here, under the Graminae family, we have three subfamilies. But the important thing you can see here is that wheat, rye, and barley are all in the same subfamily than oat. And we also have rice and corn coming from other subfamilies, as well as sorghum and millet. The second figure on this page shows the gluten content of various grains. Here you can see that gluten is not a single protein, but a family of proteins, which include gliadins and glutenins. And the interesting thing is that it's not the glutenins, but the gliadins that seem to be more of a problem. So, for example, of all of these foods, wheat has one of the highest of gliadins. However, if you look below, you can also see that corn has these gliadins, as does rye, and even oat, sorghum, and millet, though rice has only a small amount of the gliadin protein. When we go to the glutenin protein, we see that rice has one of the higher values and shares this with buckwheat, but is also shared with corn and rye. So you can see that of all these foods, corn has one of the higher quantities of the combined proteins that are of concern, certainly equal to or greater than that of wheat. And indeed, we do find a growing amount of corn problem. Page 179 has this table of symptoms and conditions that can be a clue about gluten intolerance, while page 173 has a table of all the gluten-associated diseases, which is huge. On page 178, there's a diagram of how the inflammatory process is triggered by these proteins and all the complexity involved once these genes have been turned on. There was a second article that came out in Alternative Medicine Review on celiac disease in 2009. There are some good pictures of the small intestine, both normal with villi in figures A and C, and in the celiac condition, images B and D, where B even gives a hint of what leaky gut could look like. These articles are available on our website under gluten. Putting this all together, based on these diagrams, the question is, when we go gluten-free, what does that really mean? Gluten-related foods fall into three categories. There are the classic gluten grains and foods based on these grains, there are the non-classic gluten grains, which are in the same family as the gluten grains and share at least some of the proteins with the classic grains. And then there are foods coming from other botanical families that share characteristics and proteins with the gluten grains. So we prefer to avoid using the term gluten-free since there is such lack of precision nowadays. Most gluten-free products will contain some of these non-classic or pseudo-grains. There is huge profit making a food with cheap corn or oat and then marking up the price 30% or more. We prefer to go with grain-free, at least for a part of the elimination diet. The easiest way to achieve this is to look at paleo websites, recipes, and products at stores, such as Whole Foods, where paleo in most cases means 100% grain-free. If you go to my website under articles, you'll find a whole host of articles, including ones on how food plans work, carbohydrates, sugar, frankenfoods, the gut-brain connection, gluten, 
including the classic and the non-classic gluten grains and pseudo grains. Please press escape or backspace to return to the prior screen. Thank you.